that's roads from the roadway and, and culverts. You know, there's no um, catch basins or anything like that. Um, the existing site has um, a few easements. Um, one of them, the Greenbelt easement, which I mentioned before, um, utility easements. The CMP has, um, you know, the poles and the overhead service on the property and also um, some relating to the access uh, in um, passing over the existing Golden Ridge Lane. Um, Golden Ridge Lane LLC is proposing to update the uh, roadway maintenance agreement, uh, which was first written in 1986. And this is uh, to address the ownership and access and shared you know, maintenance responsibilities for all of the, the owners who, who use that portion of the road. And this, this maintenance agreement, there's a draft that we submitted, but it's also something that's a, an agreement that we're working on, you know, with all the abettors. And, um, you know, well, the, the goal is to have a nice new clean document at the end of this process. And there's, um, I mentioned also the Portland Water District easement, you know, which will be for the water service. And there's also a proposed a 20 foot wide um, pedestrian easement up here on this lot, lot three, which would basically be for the owners of lot four to be able to cross over and attach to the green belt pathway. We are requesting a few waivers. Um, one is for the road width. Um, the town standard is a 22 foot road with four foot shoulders. And we're re requesting to reduce that to an 18 foot road with two foot shoulders. And this is the same as what was proposed and approved in 2003. And uh, it's been reviewed uh, by the fire chief too, and he, he's accepted uh, the way that our plan is designed. Another one is uh, waiver is for the road alignment. As I mentioned, the first 550 or so feet of Golden Ridge Lane, we're, we're gonna shift it slightly just two feet off from the center line to avoid that Greenbelt easement. Another waiver was for the scale of the plan. Um, we've submitted a subdivision plan drawn a scale of one inch equals 60 feet so that you can show the whole parcel on one plan. Um, and the standard in the ordinance is one inch equals 40 foot scale. Uh, the next waiver was for um, the datum. Because the topography, we were using topography from the original subdivision plan. And these plans have reference to mean sea level, not to the USGS data, and so we're requesting a waiver to use the, the data that's on the current survey. Um, we did receive the comments um, in the AMEC letter dated uh, April 14th, and um, have reviewed the responses and resubmitted um, to uh, Maureen on the 22nd. Um, I know that none of you have seen any of these um, revisions, but you know, I could definitely go through and, and touch on, you know, our responses to, to his comments, if you would like. And that's my that presentation. Okay, does anyone have any questions they'd like to ask or things we need to explore before we open for the public comment period? Victoria. Just a quick question about the planting um, the, of the evergreens with the youngs. This was at their request. So I was wondering, um, sometimes we'll see on the plans where those trees, how many trees, that level of detail. Um, mm -hmm. When you work with the youngs over the next month, do you think you would actually get something that concrete, the number, the placement? Uh, there, there is a plan uh, on the, the road plan, I think it's sheet four, that there, there are some plants shown on there. Um, there's like six evergreen trees. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Thank you. We'll open the public comment period and may have some questions for you in a bit. Okay. Any member of the public want to comment? The, the first issue, be clear here, the first issue before the planning board is the question of completeness, whether there is enough information for the planning board to proceed, not the merits of the proposal. Um, if you were to make a determination about completeness tonight, 
and then go ahead to make determination about um, approval, mm -hmm. then you would want to have two comment periods. But if you're going to have, say, a completeness determination and then a tabling, then you would only need one comment period. Okay. Well, our normal procedure would then only result in one comment period. So, if there are any members of the public who wish to comment tonight, please come forward and comment on whatever aspect of this you would like to comment on at this point. But our, our decision, our initial decision to make is that of completeness. Anyone here to speak on this application? No one? Okay, then the public comment period is closed and members of the planning board, if you have questions or things you want to discuss, perhaps we should start by having you come back and review the responses to the uh, engineer's letter. Imagine everyone's interested to hear that. This is your, the letter of April 14, 2011. I guess, would you like me to read his actual comment and then a response? I, I could just go no, number think, one, No, I think we two. all have it, and it's been in the public record for quite a while, so I don't think we need to read okay. it. If you can just address the responses, that would be fine. Okay, so for, for number one, there's obviously no response required. That's just a project understanding. I'm and sorry, you're going to have to speak a little louder. The microphone is not picking you up very well. Okay. Actually, if you move your computer over a bit, so it doesn't block the microphone on the podium, you might get a little bit. Okay, for um, number one the pro is project understanding. Um, so obviously the, there's no response required. Uh, number two, about the professional land surveyor's stamp. Uh, in our cover letter, uh, we requested uh, that the existing conditions plan and the amended subdivision plan be stamped at um, the time of the final subdivision plan submission, because so we want to make sure that everything, any items which come up during this um, review um, will be, you know, incorporated into the plan before the stamp. Um, number three, the culvert cover. Uh, the cover depth over the culverts um, has been reviewed and modified. Um, the 15-inch culvert at station um, 268 has a minimum of the one-foot cover over the pipe. The finished grade of the roadway over the 12-inch culvert at station um, 381 has been raised in order to obtain a minimum of one-foot cover over the pipe. Uh, for number four, box cuts. Um, Les Berry uh, submitted a letter. Um, his response was that uh, the existing um, road uh, was probably inspected by uh, Bob Malley, so there should be a record of the construction. And he suspects that the road's okay, but a few test pits may be necessary during construction to verify the gravel thickness and quality. Number five, the central main power easement. Um, as I mentioned in, our, in, the, in the presentation, um, that we're in the process of securing a utility easement for the underground um, service um, for electric cable and telephone. Number six, uh, the subsurface wastewater disposal systems. There was no response required for that one. Number seven, the maintenance responsibility of the water main and hydrant. Uh, as I mentioned in the presentation, uh, the, after the system is installed, inspected and approved, the Portland Water District will own and maintain the public uh, water line and hydrant. And um, we've submitted a draft of the easement, um, which you will probably get in the next round of meetings. Um, and we've attached a the Portland Water District easement um, note um, to both sheets um, three and four, which is our road plan and profile. Number eight, the stormwater management calculations. Uh, the submission booklet containing the stormwater management calculations has been submitted to uh, AMIC for their review. Uh, number nine, uh, post flows. Um, Les Berry uh, submitted a response for this one. And um, the post flows are minimal, and uh, the outlet end of each pipe um, doesn't really have much grade. It's sort of a flat site in this area. And um, the level spreaders would probably be more of a hindrance than a help in this particular situation. 
Number 10, ditch velocities. Uh, temporary stone check dams have been added to the road ditches in areas where the grades warrant erosion control. Um, and on sheet four and sheet six of our plans that we resubmitted, um, there's a detail for the stone check dam and sheet four has the locations. And I think that should address all of the comments from Amic. Okay, focusing on the question of completeness, which is the one before us at the moment. Anyone have any questions or items they'd like to discuss? I do. Eliza. Yeah. Um, so, one of the items that we would need is the road maintenance agreement, mm -hmm. and that hasn't been finalized. And what's the risk that all the parties can't get together and agree? I mean, typically it's uh, an agreement that's proposed with the subdivision and then anybody who buys a lot has to comply with it, but this is sort of an after-the-fact negotiation. Um, uh, what's your feeling about where that stands? Right. Um, as part of our the April 22nd submission, uh, we did submit um, a declaration of covenants um, with respect to the maintenance for Golden Ridge Lane extension, and um, this this document is mostly for lots three and four, um, although the intent is to, you know, do the all of Golden Ridge Lane and to update the entire agreement um, from the 1986 agreement. So, I mean, it's uh, this agreement could work with the existing 1986 agreement, although it would be much cleaner to have a, like a full new document. So, I mean, we we are working with the with the abutters on that and have submitted a draft of what we. So the one you Those. submitted is sufficient to meet the completeness, completeness requirement, but, but in your view, it's not the ideal maintenance agreement? Yeah. Well, we're, we're still working on the agreement, yeah, okay. the consensus. <laughs> Anybody else? Madam Chairman, can I ask a question? Yes. <clears throat> Excuse my voice. Um, are these lots that you're proposing, have they been sold already? Um, the... The, the two lots are owned, um, well, the, the one lot which we're proposing to subdivide into two is owned by Golden Ridge Lane, Lane LLC, who's the developer, and they have not been sold yet. So somebody that was going to buy them would be subject to this agreement? Correct. Okay. Anybody else? Would anyone like to make a motion regarding completeness? Motion for consideration, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Golden Ridge Lane LLC for amendments to the previously approved Golden Ridge subdivision to add another lot at the end of Golden Ridge Lane be deemed complete. Do I have a second? A second. Liza, all right. Any discussion on the motion for completeness? All in favor? Any opposed? Okay, so that's six votes in favor. No opposed, no abstain abstention. So the next item to consider um, is whether we want to. Do we have to hold a public hearing or just option? <coughs> You, you don't have to hold a public hearing since it's an amendment, but okay. uh, as the planner, I will report to you that I have received uh, inquiries from abutters, so there's definitely interest out there, and you might have someone at the public hearing. Okay. So with that input, the question is, do we want to hold a public hearing, and if so, we would proceed with the motion to table. Madam Chairman, I'd yes. like to ask a question. When I looked at the uh, level map, I didn't quite follow the ridge, uh, uh, the ridge along there, and I'd suggest perhaps we would benefit by a site visit. I agree. Anyone else? Liza? Okay. Everybody else think site visit's a good idea? Do you have a consensus on that? All right. Should we schedule that first? We're done with snow. <laughs> We're still done with water. <laughs> Actually, the word was elevation. I was looking for it. I've forgotten the elevation. Okay. 